647 deputies in Greenville have identified the suspect who was arrested in connection with the shooting. The Greenville County Sheriff's Office has charged 28 year old William Lacey III with attempted murder. Deputies say a man was shot just after three Sunday morning. It happened at the park at Sondrio Apartments on Pelham Road. No word yet on what led up to the shooting. And two people were shot while walking a trail and now Anderson police want to know who's responsible. According to officers, they were called to a business on East River Street yesterday afternoon after a shooting with injuries. Officers say that they found two men there in some nearby woods with gunshot wounds. Police tell us a third man reported the group was involved in an argument a short time before the shooting and while walking on the trail, they were confronted by several people. Police are asking for anyone with information about the shooting to call Crime Stoppers. In Asheville, an off-duty fire captain saved a man's life Sunday night. The Asheville Fire Department says the fire broke out at a home on Fairfax Road. This is an image from that scene. We're told the captain was first on scene and rushed to help. Two people were taken to a hospital. The department says it's proud of all of its firefighters and their commitment to serving the community. And at 648, dozens of workers, labor leaders, and others are taking action against one Starbucks store in Anderson County. Reportedly, the company has retaliated against workers who want to form a union. Protesters were outside the I-85 Clemson Boulevard location yesterday. They say the coffee shop has been closed since Saturday after workers collectively gave management a letter listing demands for better working conditions and benefits. They're losing um, some of Starbucks benefits, even though, you know, their benefits are subpar. You know, Starbucks love to tout their health care and ASU, free college. But, you know, they schedule it. You make sure that they schedule you 20 hours a week to make sure you get those benefits. But they intentionally cut hours back um, so you can make, cannot make that threshold 20 hours a week and they lose benefits. Um, so the big concern right now is benefits um, just because people rely on this job for health care. Now, we've reached out to Starbucks for a response and we'll bring it to you as soon as we get it. As of last week, nearly 210 Starbucks stores have officially voted to unionize, according to the National Labor Relations Board. The store located on Pelham Road near I-85 in Greenville became the first location in South Carolina to join a union. All right, at 649, the FBI searched former President Donald Trump's home in Florida yesterday, reportedly as part of a probe into potential mishandling of classified information. Amy Liu is in Washington this morning. Well, a DOJ spokesperson declined to comment on this, but two sources familiar with the matter say the search is part of an investigation to whether Trump took classified records from the White House. Agents, according to those sources, were looking into whether Trump had additional presidential records as part of a Justice Department investigation earlier this year, where the National Archives said it had retrieved from Mar-a-Lago 15 boxes of records with classified information. The National Archives said Trump should have turned over that material when he left office and later asked the DOJ to investigate. Trump had a lot to say since the raid, including a lengthy statement calling it, quote, weaponization of the justice system and attack by the radical left Democrats. Though the search warrant does not suggest that criminal charges are expected, officials must demonstrate probable cause that a crime happened before obtaining one. At least one expert says there is no precedent for a former president facing an FBI raid, even going back to Watergate. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu. Okay, well, scientists in Europe say 2022 had one of the three hottest Julys on record globally. In Europe, the heat waves brought record-breaking temperatures in the west and north. Spain, the UK, and France experienced at least one day more than 104 degrees. Fahrenheit. Water reservoirs were very low levels in several parts of the EU. Hot and dry conditions affected the production of grains on the continent. France recorded the driest July since records began in 1959, with a total rainfall beginning 85% lower than the last 30 year average. Okay, it only took more than 300 years, but the last woman convicted during the Salem witch trials has been exonerated. Elizabeth Johnson Jr.'s name is now cleared thanks to the effort of a teacher and her 8th grade civics class. Johnson was one of more than 200 people accused of witchcraft back in 1692 in Salem. A teacher took note of Johnson's case of, after reading about other accused names that had been cleared. Over the last few years, her eighth graders petitioned state lawmakers and just recently were successful in getting an amendment attached to the state budget. Well, if you're thinking about getting a new job, you should sleep on it 
Literally, mattress brand Casper is hiring sleepers to snooze for a living. I had a bunch of friends asking me about this. They're like, did you hear about this? I was like, of course we did. We work for the news. Job, <laughs> requirement, the news job requirements include sleeping in company stores and other random locations. The Casper sleepers will get to wear pajamas to work, get some free products, and have a flexible part-time schedule. Wow. It's always funny when people say, did you hear yeah, about Yeah, did you hear? Yes, I did. Yeah. Dolly Parton <laughs> may be from Tennessee, but Ohio is giving her a major honor. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine is such a big fan of Dolly and her philanthropy that he's naming a day after her. DeWine has uh, declared today, August 9th, Honorary Dolly Parton Day. And she'll be visiting Ohio today to celebrate er early literacy. And remember, today is National Book Lovers Day as well. Yes. Dolly's Imagination Library mails free books to kids across five countries every month. And they're great selections of books, by the way, too. Well, a four-year-old Labrador Retriever mix named Tucker has been adopted by the Seattle Mariners and added to their clubhouse roster. The team did it to remind fans that there are lots of animals who need forever homes. And Tucker's new home is T-Mobile Stadium. No word on if the pup will be doubling as a bad boy or fetching foul balls, but Tucker already has a hug huge following, I should say, <laughs> on Twitter, and maybe you could give him a hug, too, with more than 22,000 fans. He looks like a baseball fan. Look at him go. Yeah. All right, this weekend, there's a chance for the folks in the upstate to celebrate the kickoff of Back to School. It's the sixth annual QL's Back to School Block Party, 96.3 The Block, mm -hmm. B93.7, and Absolute Total Care are hosting these events. Well, the first party will be Saturday, August 13th at the Sterling Community Center in Greenville from 12 to 3 p.m. Organizers say there will be chances to win swag bags, laptops, and Alexa devices. There will also be t-shirts, school supplies, community resources, gift cards, Italian ice, and food. And the second celebration will be Sunday, August 14th at the C.C. Woodson Community Center in Spartanburg. That's from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., co-hosted by the mayor of Spartanburg, Jerome Rice. Organizers say the back-to-school block party is all about giving back to our youth. At 654, a new entertainment complex in downtown Greenville is set to open this week. District 356 is located on Field Street near Floor Field. In February of 2021, Greenville city leaders unanimously passed an ordinance to create the project. The goal was to create a pedestrian-friendly environment around the baseball field and bring more foot traffic to the West End area. District 356 is modeled after Jersey Street at Boston's Fenway Park and named in honor of shoeless Joe Jackson's lifetime batting average in the major leagues. It's set to open tomorrow. And you can bring shoes if you want, if you want to wear shoes. Or you can be shoeless. Or you can be shoeless. <laughs> I don't know. All right, uh, the Carolina Panthers are in the last few days of training camp, and Fan Fest is almost here. Today and tomorrow are the last days of training camp. Of course, they're at Wofford in Spartanburg. And soon the Panthers will return to Charlotte to finish preparing for the new season. Fan Fest is set for Thursday night with entertainment beginning at 6. Practice starts at 7. Tickets are $5 and can be found on the Panthers website.